My name is Kendall Flint. I'm with Flint Strategies, and it's been my sincere pleasure over the last several months to work with staff, the community, and council on the development of Corona's strategic plan. Um, my role here tonight is basically to review um, the results of the information that we came out with and the selected goals, uh, mission, vision statement that council came up with during their study session. Next slide. Um, as you know, one of the goals that Council really set forth with this particular project was to ensure that we had really good community engagement. And I want to kind of go over just some of the things that we did, the highlights and, and some of the folks that participated. We did do an online survey that was uh, sent out via uh, Inner Circle that was uh, conducted by, or I'm sorry, taken by 494 residents. Now, personally, I would like to see thousands of people do it, but we did send it out on several occasions, and we did, in fact, also promote it on social media and throughout the news media. One thing I want to make sure that you're aware of, that that sample size, had we gone for a television, sorry, a telephone poll, would have also been statistically valid. Um, there's some numbers in the way that you construct these sort of things, and actually, this gives us about a plus or minus five to six percent um, accuracy rate in terms of the measure of, or sorry, margin of error. Pardon me, we're a little late tonight for me, but. Anyway, it was a really good, a good cross-section of folks. We did see a lot of um, trends that came out, and some of them were the obvious traffic, I think people were talking about, but traffic isn't something that you as a council can actually affect most of the time. There's not a whole lot you're going to be able to do with the 15 and the 91. That's sort of an is the way it is sort of situation. But the other things that we looked at and the other things we learned really were relevant, and I think those are reflected in the goals. We also held a public workshop. We had about 92 people come and attend that. I think some of the folks that we saw here tonight were there. It included a series of stations where people could interact in smaller groups and also gave them an opportunity to conduct click polling, which gave them an opportunity to express their views and opinions on some of the same things we asked in the survey. Because we know a lot of people, in fact, most people do not go to public workshops and meetings. They're, they're doing other things in their lives. They've got other things going on. So for that reason, we went ahead and scheduled interviews with a very broad cross-section of individuals representing various groups and diverse viewpoints within the community. We had over 46 of those interviews that were conducted, everybody from people that were in the youth sports to religious groups, business people, citizens for corona. I mean, all, everyone we could possibly get to the table, we got there. On top of that, we wanted to make sure that we were also connecting with youth groups. So we did, in fact, meet with the youth council through the YMCA and some other folks. Um, all of those people were encouraged to be as um, uh, forthright and honest in their opinions as possible in the same way that we had that same discussion with members of council and, and staff members. The next one, please. In the course of putting this together, of course, I sat down individually with all of the council members and had an opportunity to talk with you each about your objectives for the strategic plan, what your concerns were, and what some of the ideas you had. We also, of course, met with the members of the Planning Commission, Parks and Recreation Commission, the Library tra Board Trustees, and we held a special session for the Youth Council, which was very interesting because we were able to see the perspective, again, of some of the younger members of our community, or your community, that will be basically taking over once you know we all move on to with our lives and they're going to be here running the show and being council members and planning commissioners and whatnot. Of course, staff is a key component to being able to implement a strategic plan. The object here is to have the council come up with this vision, come up with the goals, but really get staff to implement. And because of that, we felt it was very important to meet with each of the individual department heads to find out what was going on with their individual departments, what kind of uh, strategies and plans they had in place now, and how those might be affected or implemented into an overall strategic plan that would reflect the complete direction of the city moving forward. So in addition to talking to all of the departments, heads, we also wanted to talk to the rank and file, so we set up a series of focus groups. We did two of those, which were made up of 10 to 12 individuals representing all different departments and all different levels within the uh, hierarchy. Interestingly enough, a high percentage of those people that participated were also residents, so it was interesting to kind of see the perspective of them, both as an employee of the city and as a resident. Excellent. Um, in terms of our overall promotion, as I mentioned, we were sending out email blasts via the City of Corona's inner circle. Um, Karen and I did a, a video, um, which I did for my uh, room up in <laughs> Northern California. We also sent that out and had several thousand people review that. We were very active also on social media in, in trying to encourage as many people to participate and giving them opportunities to share ideas, to take the survey if they didn't want to take the survey. I made myself available and my staff available to talk with people on a one-on-one -on -one basis to get that information back. We were also at some of the various <clears throat> pardon me, uh, 
community groups here in the community um, had an opportunity to go to the Rotary, which I, I think is probably the highest percentage of candidates I've ever seen in a single Rotary in my life. Um, but it was, it was a great Rotary, and as a Rotarian, I've got to tell you, it was one of my favorites in the state. Um, we've had some great uh, outreach efforts with our local news media. Peter Fischetti has been pretty good about putting things in the paper, not, not so much all the things that I'd like to have him put in the paper, but he certainly was promoting the effort and making sure that people knew that it was going on. So we had articles that were published both in uh, December and January and quite recently just last week. So research, in addition to that, we had, that was all basically we'd call the, the qualitative, which is basically what people think and feel what's going on in their hearts about the community, what they need or believe needs to be fixed. But we have to look at that and balance it with the quantitative data, which is a look of all the background materials that were relevant to this process. So we went through your fiscal budgets for the last several years, your capital improvement budgets. We checked also with local um, articles, blogs, things people were saying, things people were posting, and really tried to get a big a great big picture of what was going on here from a factual basis as well as from a perception basis next slide so and to do that that basically got us to the point where we're putting together a strengths weaknesses opportunities and threats analysis and that was sort of the basis of the conversation we had with council when we're talking about some of the ideas that were going on where you have strengths where you have weaknesses where you have areas that need a specific improvement and where you have areas where you may have folks in the public that want to see a change or want to see a, an enhanced service, but at this juncture you may not have the financial wherewithal to implement that. So the idea is really taking a look and seeing where Corona is in its growth as a community, in its growth as a city, and making sure we're positioning it for future success. Next slide. So that really got us to the point where after looking at all of that, we talked with staff and talked with council about what is the fundamental mission of this community? What is the mission of the city? Why is Corona a city? And in working with you and getting, when capturing some of your ideas, we came up with this vision statement that came out of your comments. You can go to the next slide. That the city of Corona's mission is to serve as a caretaker and protector of our community through thoughtful planning and the highest and best use of our fiscal and human resources, providing a solid foundation for a sustainable future. The mission statement addresses the fundamental purpose of a city, which is protect through law enforcement, which is planning, then community development, giving out building permits if that is required, and zoning. This also talks about fiscal responsibility, making sure that you're balancing both the fiscal resources, the finances available to you at any given time, with your human resources, which is the staff you have and what they're capable of implementing. And the idea, of course, is you're becoming a city in order to preserve a, a quality of life and provide for a solid future. So that was the mission statement that we came out of your workshop, which we held last month. If you go now further, we're looking at the vision. And I know um, Councilman Haley and I have had some questions about vision over, over this particular project. And what does that really mean? And vision is basically when you wake up in the morning and you close your eyes and you say, this is what Corona is going to be in 25 or 30 years. Vision statements are given in the present tense because it's like, this is the vision, this is what I think. And moving forward, we believe that Corona is an inclusive, diverse city that treasures its past while embracing its future, values an exceptionally high quality of life, attracts diverse economic opportunities, provides ample resources for entertainment and recreation opportunities for people of all ages, and provides transparent governance to gauge its residents. That is based on the feedback that we got from council at the workshop. We made some adjustments. The idea is we want to make sure that this is a community that is able to look back on its past, to embrace that, and know that there's also new development coming in the future, that it is evolving, that it knows that the quality of life here is exceptional for the entire area and is something that people look at and, and really want to be a part of, and certainly that the diverse economic opportunities are out there. You have a lot of pockets right now. There's some other things that we can do. There's other things that you can become. And the thing we heard over and over, especially from our younger residents and, and from some of our 20 and 30-somethings, is the real need for that diverse entertainment opportunities for people of all ages and in all areas of Corona. I think, as you all recall, we talked about how, in many ways, Corona is a, is a community of communities where there's different areas, whether you're north, south, east, or west, and the idea is looking at this as a holistic, connected community where all these things exist all over. And then the final line is really talking about transparency and governance. Perception is everything. And the idea here, and 
we felt that the council also was looking to go in that direction is to make sure that we're committed long term to transparency in everything that the city does so that people know what's going on they know how to participate they know how to be actively engaged and they know that what they see and what they see being acted upon by council has been fully vetted in the most appropriate form now moving forward let's talk a little bit about the goals um, when we initially talked about the starting this project and it's true of all strategic plans goals we cannot have dozens of them. There are a limited number of goals in this case because, again, limited resources. You may find in five or eight years that financial situations change. You may change your, your ideas about what's important. But for right now, these goals reflect what the community told us they wanted to see, what staff told us they could accommodate, and what the council really wanted to move forward on as a whole. Um, the biggest trick with strategic plan, none of this stuff is shockingly new material that you've never heard before. It's a plan, though, that lays, in, lays out a structured approach to moving forward and really is going to be successful based on the willingness of council to stick to it. It's, it's really how long are you going to stick to it and keep moving forward and, and keep moving these things to completion. The first goal, of course, is public safety. And this is a very straightforward but, but very important piece of it. It's promoting, and, uh, promoting public safety by protecting residents and businesses, ensuring that as you move forward, there's always adequate funding for police and fire, and of course, ensuring adequate funding for facilities and equipment that are needed to support timely delivery of police and fire services. Um, when you look at also public safety, you're also looking at infrastructure. And we heard a little bit tonight about what's going to be safe in terms of roadway improvement projects, things like this. That goes to this goal as well. So it's not just law enforcement and fire. It is also infrastructure. Next goal. This one I, I cannot emphasize enough. Um, Every, across all demographics, all ages, no matter where you lived in the community, there is such a sense of loss of what the downtown area has become. And the overriding thing there was everybody wants to see a revitalization of this area, despite the fact there's not RDA funds anymore, despite the fact it's going to be challenging. And council seem to really also embrace that. We need to, and I want to commit to a long-term effort across all departments to achieve the revitalization of the downtown area to explore new uses in that urban core that may result in entertainment, arts, and cultural amenities, and to support opportunities for private sector businesses to hold events and or opportunities to bring the community together in that downtown area. There are a lot of other things that are, have been discussed, but the downtown was consistently next to safety and even in some cases above traffic, the thing that we heard most in all the interviews that we talked all the people we talked with. Next slide. Economic development, this is another area that we asked council and gave you the opportunity to really think about where you want to focus. And the economic development department within the, the city has already made strides in this area, so we're really just reinforcing that and then refocusing those efforts even stronger. We want to see a enhanced economic development effort that brings in higher paying jobs. So the idea that we have less people commuting out of Corona and getting on the 91 and the 15 and more people that are able to work within this community. The idea, of course, is that we're looking at, at high tech businesses that would provide a good fit here for their local residents. Obviously, there's also a desire to continue to work with local businesses to make sure that they're going to continue to succeed and we're not going to lose them either by attrition or having them go away. We want to make sure that we're con continually uh, reinforcing the idea that this is a good and vibrant community and we want to make sure that our businesses know that it's a business-friendly environment. There's also an opportunity here to coordinate with local colleges and workforce training opportunities to figure out ways to bring that workforce to Corona so that we can then have these types of high-tech businesses that can be successful moving forward. Next slide. <laughs> Partnerships. This is one of the areas that we really think that there should be a, a, an opportunity, and I think Council was, was also actively engaged in embracing this, the idea that since the city is not able to provide all the services that perhaps it might like, and I'm thinking more of terms of the soft services, things like athletic programs or music, things like this, you can uh, serve as a conduit for connecting communities, connecting these groups within the area, and helping facilitate the delivery of those services through these private partnerships and public partnerships. So one of the goals here, of course, is to see, seeking creative partnership opportunities to allow private agencies to provide programs for specifically youth, seniors, and special needs, needs groups within the city. 
And then, of course, proactively developing partnerships, not only with those that are community organizations, but really continuing to work with regional business interests and regional planning interests. In the same way that tonight you were talking about RCTC, SCAG, there are other agencies out there that work within economic development, that work within parks and recreation, and there are opportunities, of course, that you guys can continue on um, and be successful. Number five, improve circulation. Um, it is a goal, but I want to be clear about this one. There's, in the context of the strategic plan, it's, it's focusing on circulation elements within the city's sphere of influence, meaning traffic signalization, the roadways that you control, the things that you can be um, having a good impact on. The idea, of course, is to reduce local traffic, make things, if possible, more pedestrian friendly, and improve those regional roadways. Technical advances will be really critical in that in, in terms of implementation and working with staff to come up with those really good ideas. That will be on, on their plate to figure it out. And finally, our sixth goal, which um, can't emphasize enough, is improve communications. Uh, I mentioned previously, perception is everything. And if people perceive that something is or is not easy or accessible or they perceive that it's not going the way they want, it, it doesn't matter if it's real or not. So to the extent that the city can continue to um, be proactive in its communications efforts, look at them with a fresh set of eyes and maybe determine that there are some ways you could be more efficient or more effective, more proactive, um, committing to transparency in all city actions, um, developing cost effective means to communicate with residents and businesses. Um, it's very expensive to put together brochures and flyers and send them out via mail and statistically speaking, they don't they are not necessarily the most effective within a community. Um, you find that electronic media, social media, all these other things, they really are, are gaining ground in terms of making things easier for people. And then we're also looking at taking a more active role in providing timely, accurate information about city services and programs to the extent that we can do that, working with the various departments and, of course, as council members going out into the community and making yourselves available and, and talking about these types of things. Next slide. So the implementation hierarchy for those goals, the way the strategic plan works, obviously at the top of our, our list here are Corona residents. They are the voters. They are the people who put elected officials in office. Elected officials are city council. They are responsible for policies and goals, which you came up with. So the goals that we've discussed, these were generated by the discussion that was facilitated by our staff that you, know, you guys were able to identify. Look, based on we, the information we've been provided, these are the goals we want to move forward with. Now, the strategies for implementation, that's going to go to your city manager, your assistant city manager, and to a certain extent, some of your commissions. They're going to figure out the pathway to get your goal done. It's like the quarterback figuring out, the coach is there figuring out what the play is going to be, and the quarterback's out there doing his part. Tactics are the individual action items that will be coming back via staff, and they'll be telling you this is what we are doing to implement each of these particular things. And whether it's, you know, looking at an update for the zoning code or sign code in the downtown area for um, community development, or it's law enforcement taking a look at different ways to um, reduce crime in some of these pocket areas that we have challenges, those will all be things that tie back into the strategic plan overall. Now, a couple things that I also wanted to talk about briefly tonight um, before taking questions is uh, governance. And one of the things that we talked about during our workshop with uh, the council was the way that this plan becomes successful and becomes something other than just sitting on a shelf is a long-term commitment by the city council and staff to focus on implementation. It's not something you're going to accomplish in a year. It's something that happens over two, four, six, ten years, over a long period of time. And to that end, one of the um, conversations that was held during that meeting was a discussion about ending sort of a, um, a, a tradition where each year the new mayor established a focus for his or her term. And council all agreed that it, moving forward this will not be the case, that the council as it sits today is united in its uh, opinion that this needs to be an ongoing effort where we're not changing our focus but you're continuing forward as you move forward and you're not going to just change every year because that of course is inefficient. Um, to that end, the role of mayor, just to reiterate, will be a ceremonial presiding over the evenings, uh, meetings, uh, community events, that sort of thing, spokesperson, but we're not going to see a change in direction. The strategic plan is now in place and so the idea is that to be successful you're going to continue moving in that direction. 
And that's a pretty biggie, that's a big deal. And I think that it was, it was a really healthy discussion to have and I'm, I'm glad that we were part of doing that. Um, before you with your action tonight, I will defer to Greg on that, but the way that we have this set up at this point is that you'd be able to adopt your strategic plan or amend with some changes that you might like, amend and adopt, but I'm available to answer any questions or take any comments.